welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So you better gear up, get ready to fight that bipartisan National Commission on Fiscal Responsibility and Reform with Erskine Bowles and Al Simpson, uh, the VAT, 23% national sales tax, a regressive tax, the most odious variety. Uh, Lanny Davis points to uh, a bill submitted uh, in February by Representative Chaka Fata, Democrat of Pennsylvania, Debt Free America Act, H.R. 4646, a 1% transaction tax on every financial transaction. Uh, this guy's got a lot of problems with this. He wants to exempt the sale of stock. Don't do that. <laughs> you want to stop high frequency trading, program trading, flash trading. You got to include stock. Uh, and you'd pay it on everything. He says he wants to, he wants to charge you this on uh, an ATM withdrawal. No, 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 not not ATM withdrawals, Chaka Fata. We want financial transactions. ATM is you're taking your own money out of the bank. It's not a transaction. It's a withdrawal from a bank. This is insane. Uh, I don't know. This is a lack of programmatic clarity by Chaka Fata, to put it uh, mildly. But the idea would be all transactions, stocks, bonds, foreign exchange, currency dealings, uh, above all derivatives, all credit default swaps, collateralized debt obligations, structured investment vehicles, options, futures, indices, combinations of those. But the idea uh, of the Tobin tax can be successfully bootlegged into the austerity hysteria created by these ruling circles, of which Lenny Davis is is one, uh, and it's time to push that. So basically, you've got to stop speculation with these strong attacks directly on derivatives uh, and the kinds that you can't ban, right? You probably ought to ban credit default swaps and ban collateralized debt obligations and synthetic CDOs and CDO squared. But for the rest of the speculative world, in particular stocks, direct stock transactions, that's where you need your, your Tobin tax. And I have, a, again, a million-dollar uh, exemption for the average person so that if you're dealing for your retirement account or whatever it is, you're not going get, to get hit with that. But certainly not uh, ATM transactions. That's, that's just going wild. Speaking of millionaires, we have our dear friend, the Garden State Göring, the Göring of Trenton. Uh, Chris Christie, he wants to protect the millionaires. There was a, a millionaire's tax put through the New Jersey legislature. This was pure communism. It was going to raise the top marginal income tax rate by 1.75%. So from 9% to 10.75%. Uh, confiscatory, outrageous. Oh, my God. This is a minor touch-up. But uh, the Garden State Göring, Christie, uh, refuses to tax his principal backers, right, his rich friends, his Republican fat cat uh, base. Rather, he wants union busting. He wants to play the taxpayers against the public sector unions. And, of course, according to the, uh, the lunatics over here at the Wall Street Journal, redolent of Austrianism, they say, New Jersey is ground zero in the national fight between the taxpayers and the government unions. Well, I would just echo what our friend Trumpka just said. Is it, what, you think the unions caused this? Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, Countrywide Bank, Angelo Mozillo, uh, plus Merrill Lynch, plus Citibank, plus Goldman Sachs, all bankrupt. And now you want to take it out of the hide of the unionists. Well... Uh, those are the eternal arguing points of the reactionaries. And here's another one. Uh, remember, in our discussion of the failed FinReg bill last week, we we quoted Senator Harkin, Harkin along with uh, from Iowa, Harkin of Iowa, along with Blanche Lincoln of Arkansas, for whatever her reasons were, they tried to put up some kind of resistance against the Wall Street steamroller coming in particular from Corker and Greg and Chambliss uh, and Shelby. 
who wanted to have you know free field for derivatives and very blatant, very open, right? And not not in the clever, deceptive way the Democrats do it. The, uh, the 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 quote from Harkin was, "Oh, you listen to these Republicans, you think that a hedge fund dealing in derivatives is just a pop mom and pop Main Street store." So here's the Wall Street Journal attack on the Finreg bill. It, not naturally, it's it's too draconian. It's practically again Bolshevism. Uh, the 6th of July, 2010 editorial, a trillion unintended consequences. The Dodd-Frank bill contains a last-minute assault on Main Street derivatives. Yep, that's right. Those shopkeepers down on Main Street, right, they're dealing derivatives all day long. And, of course, the proof of this comes from the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, but uh, down on Main Street, everybody's using derivatives to hedge. Well, fine. Uh, hedging is hedging. Hedging means that you're an end user of a raw material, uh, or you're using it as a component to create finished commodities. Uh, and that, of course, that's been around for a long time, and that's fine. Uh, what we're talking about are financial derivatives, credit derivatives, right? You don't use a collateralized debt obligation or a credit default swap to hedge these products. And let's also remember, under the Commodities Exchange Act of 1936 to 1982, options on agricultural products were illegal, and we did better then than we have done in the meantime. So notice the hysteria of these financial elites for their precious derivatives. Now, a couple of other things to, to look at here in conclusion. The Russian spy swap. Well, how about that? Uh, so far, many puzzling aspects, right? Th things like this tend to come out over time. The one thing you can say is that the U.S., the spies that the U.S. got back from Russia had actually done things. These were government officials with access to state secrets. Four of them traded for these 11 feckless characters who never did anything, as far as I can see. In terms of what has been released publicly contained in the indictments and so forth, they didn't accomplish anything. And if they were a sleeper cell, they were, they were pretty somnolent uh, at that. But the, the more important thing is the general um, climate. Note again that Tretyakov book and the campaign around the Tretyakov book, uh, Cold War Never Ended, uh, that the Russians spy everywhere and so forth. Look also, Hillary Clinton's uh, speech in Krakow, Poland, this past week, she's got this thing saying uh, democracy is in trouble. We're going to support citizen action worldwide. Yeah, everywhere but here, right? State Department supports all revolutions, but its own <laughs> all color revolutions except the one we we would need here. Not not in color, but in in reality. Uh, she attacks who? Cuba, North Korea, but then she throws in China and Russia. These are the human rights abusers. These are no good. See, you're getting a campaign going, right? The anti-Russian campaign is all over the place. Poland, by uh, contrast, is a model. Well, as I told Gazeta Viborcha in, uh, in Gdansk back in uh, 1990, millions of Poles were thrown out of work by uh, the shock therapy brought in by Jeffrey Sachs. Notice also two reactionary Republicans. Mitt Romney in the Washington Post and John Kyle in the Wall Street Journal, both attacking the START Treaty, the, uh, the one uh, diplomatic achievement that's been done so far. So this is more or less a, uh, an offensive by the neocons coming up uh, out of their holes. A couple of short notes. The Bradley Manning story, right, the WikiLeaks tape. Um, it's fine to be a whistleblower, but beware of WikiLeaks. I smell Soros. Watch out for Soros. And uh, I guess that brings us to the end of our appointed time here uh, on World Crisis Radio. And we'll be seeing you again next week, God willing.